Dennis Colley with the village people. Hello. Ray, welcome to the show. Uh, my pleasure. Alex, welcome oh, to the show. Thank you. Listen, uh, in about an hour's time, uh, the world premiere of Can't Stop the Music start, uh, starts in Sydney, and uh, you're all going along to it. Oh, we're Just tell us a little bit about it. Well, Can't Stop is a um, musical produced by Alan Carr, right. musical score by Jacques Morale, directed by Nancy Wilson. It's sort of the 80s version of a 1930 musical. Right. What about Nancy Wilson directing these Nancy days? Walker. Nancy Walker. Nancy Walker. <laughs> I should say Nancy Wilson. Because um, known as Rhoda, and I mean, she got an amazing applause oh, at yeah. your concert the other night. She's, She's a fabulous. wonderful lady. Yeah, wonderful she really lady. is. Yeah. Brilliant director from what I've seen of the film Very clips already. Much. I mean, the YMCA film clip with all the gymnasium. And the, how long did that take? Let me see, about two days to film, right. to shoot, right. Yeah, a bit after that? Oh, well, Bruce Jenner, who's in the movie, he was there, and uh, to watch Bruce in a YMCA was really a treat because right. he's so competitive and so energetic, and it was really great. It looks like a great movie. There's a lot of different sequences in the movie, isn't there? Yes, there are. And you're all dressed in white at one stage. Yes, right. that's uh, one of the milkshake commercials. I see, there you go. Well, listen, we'll go, get into the show. This group uh, have already been number one in England, and they're called Dexy Midnight Runners. And it's sort of like this sort of 60s revivals coming back into, into, the, into the sort of the English scene. And mini skirts and hairdos up like this. Right. And ska music, <laughs> right? And here they are, Dexy's Midnight Runners with Gino. All right. Well, there you go, Dexy's Midnight Runners and Gino. Felipe, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Listen, first of all, now I've got to ask this. Where did the concept of all the individual characters come from in the village people? From our producer, Jacques Morale. Yeah? Well, I mean, uh, well, tell us a bit about all of this. He had uh, sampled and taste, had a little bit of taste of success with the Ritchie family in 1975 and yes, wanted a different, the concept, a, a different concept uh, with, a, with a different group and right. another group. And so therefore he went down into the village and around New York and locations in the United States, San Francisco, Fire right. Island, and wanted to put his concept together. and bumped into me and a few of the other guys. He's being a bit modest. Isn't right. Felipe was the idea basically right. behind the whole thing because he saw Felipe dancing the with the bells on and he was just dancing to the disco beat. Well, listen, I can understand with the mod squad and starching and hearts, like, sort of like, you know, people like yourself, but an Indian in the group, now that has to be a first, <laughs> isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah? And I mean, I noticed in the audience, especially in Sydney, as the concert says, Indians and construction workers and goodness right. knows what. Very Must rambunctious be... people. <laughs> <laughs> the wilder the better. We Listen, like do it. you like Paul McCartney? Yes. Oh, we love Heard him. his new album or single coming up? Not yet. We haven't had a chance. Great single. From London, our London connection. Sherry, are you there? Yes, she's there. From, uh, Miss Cherry Wright is talking to Mr. Paul McCartney. But before that, we've got a single out uh, by The Romantics. This is sensational. And here it is, What I Like About You, The Romantics. Well, that was the American Romantics, and they nearly didn't make it. I nearly made a terrible blue and went into halfway through the show saying Paul McCartney was about to come on, but never mind. Whew, uh, Glenn. No, Good I do should not welcome you to Countdown because you were on last week on by the phone. Right. Uh, now but you I got me in the flesh. There you go. <laughs> uh, what I must ask you is, as far as a, a concept of, of the entire group is concerned, to put it on stage must be one of the most exhausting things I've ever seen in my life because you just keep going and going and going. Well, we, we do a lot of work. We enjoy what we're doing, and a lot depends on our audiences. The more the audiences get into it, the less work it is for us, because then it be, just becomes a big party, right. and we have a great time. And, and this headdress, where did you get this headdress from? Well, time? several people make them in the United States, and uh, I'm sort of short, so if anybody has headdresses, send them my way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then listen, uh, we've got this lovely lady, and you already said you liked the single, yes. Magic Rhythm. It's Christy Allen's new single. This is, in, in actual fact, the cover for the single, and the first 10,000 copies that are sold will get this cover and she's now on center stage you there christy Hello. yes there she is hello christy and here she is with her new single magic rhythm All it's christy right. allen well there you go that's um, paul mccartney uh with uh, sherry and that was a really good interview actually he amazes me that guy and that coming up song is so infectious it's just a great song it's one of the most infectious on the charts at the moment and that's, but, a, that's everybody in that promotion is paul mccartney except for linda, linda right? and <laughs> the one that's standing next to linda and linda plays a part as well yeah right. listen talking about infectious songs since san francisco and then it went on and on and on uh the songwriters are amazing with, with, with your bunch aren't they uh, as so band producers, producers yeah, yeah. Um, when they play your songs, do you think, oh, yeah, that could be hits, or do you sort of make up your mind after it's all recorded? And, well, they and come done. from one man. Um, right. The melodies Jacques, and yeah. the songs come from one melody, from, uh, oh. man, Jacques Morale. Right. 
pretty much. So when, is, when, when did you sort of come up and sort of say, hey, listen, I've got a new song, I want you to hear it, and this could possibly be... When we were recording it. Yeah. <laughs> when you were recording it. <laughs> when we were recording it. Right. He says, here you go, guys, sing it. Sure. Well, listen, since uh, the San Francisco and their Macho Man and, and so on and so on, uh, I, the disco start to change, and a lot of people start to come as cowboys and leathermen and everything like that. Did it become frightening for you, like when you had walked into a disco and suddenly saw all these possibly village uh, village people clones, really? Not frightening. No, they say imitation's the best form of flattery. Well, there you go. I'll tell you what, talking about um, imitations, this, this group is no imitation. In fact, we're very proud of this group, Split Ends. Mm -hmm. And I believe you've seen some of their stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like yeah. their hairdos. <laughs> That's even better. And uh, they've been uh, number one on the national uh, album charts for six weeks, number one for eight weeks on the singles chart. So that's not bad with, uh, with I've Got You. Here is their new single, which we uh, previewed a couple of weeks ago from their, um, fr from their True Colors album. This is a great song, a beautiful ballad, and it's I Hope I Never. Have a listen to this, you two. All right. A great song and a great album, uh, Split End. Listen, um, getting back to the images and everything else like that, the music has changed by the, by the village people quite radically over the last three or four years, I think. Uh, and especially, not, it's not really disco now. Can't Stop the Music is totally different to say like something from, like San Francisco. Well, you um, have to change it. Yeah. It's uh, entertainment. What's disco like in America these days? It's still there. Well, they, they haven't even welcomed it. Welcome. Oh, oh thank you. I've seen you so much in the last week, and I keep thinking you've been on the show all, all the time. Uh, no, how much has it changed? It's changing all the time. Yeah. Um, there's still your regular thumpa thumpa thumpa. Right. But it's, everything is mixing up, and it's it's great. It's um, right. exciting. Now, construction worker and cowboy. Now, there's two. Uh, and I mean, nearly Too every what? person I see around <laughs> at a disco somewhere, they're always wearing sort of a, a helmet or a cowboy's hat. You know. It's for protection. Have you ever been a construction worker? Never. Never? No. Randy, a cowboy? Well, I haven't actually herded cattle, but I've ridden a horse. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and uh, well, who sort of said you had to be the construction worker then? Well, the, the group was cast like you would cast a play. They right. needed a... It was an ad in the paper. They needed a construction, a cowboy, a leather man, and so you auditioned for it like you auditioned for a play. And they right. said, you're wearing a hard hat, you're wearing a cowboy hat. Fair enough. That's how it came about. Listen, one group from England, yet another group that proves 60s is alive, in fact, are the tourists, right? And I don't know about her sort of gaining any image, because I believe the dress she's wearing in this particular film clip, she bought it at an op shop for five shillings. <laughs> now, whether you believe that or not is uh, up to you out there. Here are the tourists with a song that is already raging in the discos. Looks as if it's going to be a big one. I want you to sit back and have a listen to this, you too. Here it is, I Only Want to Be With You, the old Dusty Springfield. <laughs> Sure. We have not heard the album because we haven't got the album yet, but here it is. There is the Kiss cover, and it's titled Unmasked, and uh, so watch out for it. We'll have the album in a couple of weeks and tell you about the album. One revival, and we told you about it a couple of weeks ago, The Monkees. Uh, it, it's just been released in Australia, a special limited edition of a EP with I'm a Believer, Daydream Believer, Last Train to Clarks for a little bit of me, a little bit of you, and I think this one's going to be enormous. Out on the, on, on the market now, and The Monkees revival is certainly back with us. This has to be the smallest one to go from 12 inch singles to this one and this is the squeeze with um with a nail on my heart so uh watch out for that one i don't know where they're going to put that in the record shops but there it is a little record and actually plays so all right uh let's uh let's have a look at the b-52s reason being with rock Lob rock lobster because they are about to tour in about three weeks and here are the tour dates for the b-52s all right, that's the B-52s they're about to tour here uh, in, uh, this month, and I think that should be a fantastic tour. And what with seeing the village people the other night and everyone being, everyone being dressed up as construction workers and Indians and policemen and leather people and everything like that, and knowing that for the KISS concert in November, everyone's going to put their makeup on, I guess you're all going to come as lobsters for the B-52s. Well, never mind. Listen, unfortunately, due to circumstances beyond anyone's control last week, Gary Newman was to be our very special guest co-compare of the show up in Brisbane, but uh, unfortunately there was um, some delay down in Melbourne with planes and that, and fortunately for us, Bob Geldof had only flown up to do one particular interview with us, uh, graciously consented to do the entire show. Now, what's happened is a lot of people who are disappointed Gary Newman fans have written in and sort of said, why wasn't Gary on the show? And on top of that, a lot of people have written in, and I've been speaking to people at discos uh, and in the street throughout the week saying that 
even to the fact that uh, we sort of rigged it all and in fact Gary Newman wasn't going to compare the show at all and we knew that all along. Well, to clear it all up and to get the record straight, I have in Sydney Mr Gary Newman on the phone. Gary? Hello. How are you, mate? Fine, thank you. All right, listen, we never got it around to uh, having you as compare. No. Uh, what actually happened last week? Oh, well, we got to Brisbane. Uh, we got to Sydney Airport, rather. Right. And uh, we was in the, the lounge doing some interviews. We said to the people we'd be there at about 5 to 12, 5 minutes before the flight would go. Right. Uh, we said we, all, we was in the airport, and we are, yeah, obviously we are there. Right. They could just hold the tickets for us. We got there at 6 minutes to 12, and they'd given the tickets to standby passengers, and they wouldn't let us on the aeroplane, no matter what. Uh, Roger did. He's right. complaining that they just wouldn't let us on it. And that was that, I'm afraid. We tried to hire a Learjet to get up there. Right. There was none at the airport at the time. Well, not to worry. Listen, uh, what you haven't been doing is disappointing fans at concerts, the, the, the real true uh, Gary Newman fans. Are you happy with the Australian tour? Very much so, yeah. Very good. And also, you must be extremely happy with the We Are Glass because it's already top five in England, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Right, and it looks as if it's going to be quite a, a big hit here as well. Yeah, I, I'm pleased with that because I only did it like one evening just before we left. Right. It was done very quickly and, and recorded in a day. And it was very, very rushed, you know. I think the, the film clip was done two days after it was written. Right, is, is there a new album uh, about to be released, do you know? It'll be out in September. Right, and what's the title? Called Telecom. Right, in and uh, of course We Are Glass will be on that. Is it different from the uh, from the previous albums? Well, it's got a lot more guitars back in it and viola. Uh, right. More conventional instruments with the synthesizers. I tried to mix the two together this time. Right. Well, listen, congratulations on... Um, on the hit you have out here, and also congratulations on the English hit uh, with We Are Glass. And you must be also delighted the way uh, Cars is going in America at the moment. Yeah, I just said it's gone up to number nine. So, so I believe. That's great, yeah. All right, well, listen, uh, sorry you couldn't make the show last week, Gary. So nice. But uh, next time you come over, please try to do it, will you? Oh, definitely. Okay, mate. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, well, there you go. That was Gary. Uh, now we're going to show you a very, very... And uh, sorry, Gary, that you couldn't make the show, but... Uh, Good luck, son. All right, listen, uh, we're going to show you a very, very sneak preview of Elton John's new single, Little Genie, off his 21 to 33 album. This one is going crazy in America and, and also in the UK and looks as if it's going to be a big hit here. Here is Elton John with Little Genie. Well, um, in the background, uh, we've got the... Uh, the theme to this whole movie, Can't Stop the Music, and it's going to be a hit for sure. Right. Uh, a quick review of the album, Milkshake, I can't wait to see that tonight. How does that turn out? Is it going to be a single, do you think? Oh, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah? It's, oh, it's a, it's a ripper on the album. And, of course, there's YMCA on the album. Now, listen, if I can just hear this music up a bit, can I hear it up a bit, Stephen? Because I've always wanted to be one of the village people I've mimed, I've been... Listen, uh, there's nothing left to say. You've brought uh, the Australian audiences very much great pleasure. You've brought uh, uh, countdown audiences time and time again with hits. So I'd just like to walk back and I'd like you to take a bow for us. <laughs> All right, don't forget, don't forget that the film is about to start. The world premiere starts tonight in Australia. Can't stop the music with the boys. And it's, uh, it's one that people are queuing up to see already. All right, listen, we're going out with the number one record right around the country. Split Ends went to number two. What is the number one record, do you know? That's it. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, Australia.